Welcome to round number five of our 2021 Kart Championship. Here you can see the standings after round number four, which was held at Team Sport Brighton. I am the top of the standings on 365 points with a small lead over John, who sits in second on 289. Greg is in third on 247 points, all three of us having competed in all of the rounds so far this season. In fourth position is Mike on 152 points. He's only completed two of the four rounds so far this season. So if he doubled his points, it puts him right at the mix at the top of the standings. So it'll be interesting to see how he completes the rest of this season. Let's have a look at the second half of the standings as well. My dad's only done two of the four rounds so far this year as well. He sits on 128 points. George, likewise, having only done two rounds, is on 97 points. And two drivers that are joining us here today for their first races of the season, Tom, C and Jake, both sitting on zero points so far. But of course, they can score lots of good points here today. So the format is a qualifying session followed by a 30 minute race. We're mixed in with a number of other drivers here today. We accidentally joined one of their proper kart championships at Q Leisure. So a very competitive grid and we did fully expect to be right near the back. So let's see how we do here today and hopefully have some good racing out there. John climbed into the carts at what he says is his favourite venue that we visit in this 2021 kart championship. So today he'll be looking for a good result, saying this is a competitive grid as mentioned. Lots of other drivers out there to race against, but also within our championship, some competitive drivers. So the people out there racing today are John, myself, my dad, and also got Tom C and Jake as mentioned before. We're also joined by Greg, so the top three of the championship all entering this round, which means it's all up to play for in the remaining part of this season. The three rounds to go after this one here today are at Lid, then back here for round number seven, and then to finish off the season, we are at Buckmore Park for the biggest race of the championship. So let's go on board here with Dad. Let's go and watch a full on board lap with him around this Brighton Q Leisure circuit. As mentioned before in this series, this is definitely a track that most of us enjoy. It's got a great flow. It's a great venue, just full stop, and the carts are well prepared as well. So everyone enjoys it around here, even when the conditions do get cold, which I think was the case here today. So this is where we go under the bridge, and then we'll quickly loop back around to go over the flyover here. A pretty smooth lap so far from Dad, but this is a track that is very dependent on weight, so we'll see quite a big disparity in lap times depending on the weight. And even though the drivers out there in their Kart Master Championship were in the heavyweight division, they were still quite a lot lighter than us. So that's what partly was the problem here today, was there was a bit of a gap between us and the Kart Master Championship drivers. And the times in qualifying were actually interestingly close, and we'll show you those at the end of the session. Just a quick on board here with Jake. I think it's the first time we've ever gotten on board with him. This is his first time ever around this track, so he was taking it quite cautiously early on out there. He has actually taken a couple of wins in this championship in the Winter Series a few years back, so he does know what he's doing in go-karts, but he was taking it a little bit easy earlier on in this one here today, just to make sure that he's familiar with the track and doesn't go too crazy early on. On board with Tom now, he hasn't been a part of the championship in quite a while, I think he last raced with us in 2019 and has got a number of victories throughout the years within this championship, so a very quick driver, it'll be interested to see how he gets on here today, I think this is possibly only his second time around here, give Jake a thumbs up as he drives past him here, but Tom on a pretty quick lap here, and I think he was pretty happy with his pace overall this weekend. And it's nice to see him come out and do some karting again, because We've done this for a number of years now, so he took a few years off, but he's back racing us in 2021. So now on board with Greg here, you can sort of see that the, the conditions are starting to get a bit dark. And actually this was the end of the session, the qualifying session. So Greg has just finished his lap here and he's, he's getting out of everyone's way. I'm not sure whether everyone figured out completely it was the checkered flag, but Greg will come into the pits here at the end of this one to finish up this 10 or so minute session to decide the qualifying order. And within our group, I would get pole of a 44.6, Tom on a 44.7, Greg on a 44.8, super close at the top here. John will also be in four position on a 44.8 as well, so two temps separating the top four, quite crazy. Dad would be in fifth with Jake sitting there in sixth position for his first ever event around here at Brighton Q Leisure. 
So we were expecting a rolling start here, but it kind of just went green whenever the leader wanted it to here. So the lights go out in the distance and we go racing here. So on board with John here, gets a pretty decent start and I think he's already looking to try and get past Greg here. Smooth through the first couple of corners, we were expecting to start racing here at the, the line, but no, that wasn't the case. Not a normal go-kart rolling start, we sort of just started from the standing start, which was a little bit odd, I can't lie. So John in these opening laps is just going to try and keep pace with the carts in front. I think he thinks that his pace is pretty good around here, but as we've mentioned before, the people at the front of this field are pretty impressive and very quick, so it's always going to be tough for us to keep up with them. So now on board with my dad a little bit further back, he actually got overtaken at the start by Jake, so we're going to see whether he can close Jake down and get the overtaken. Actually a really good start from Jake. He really sprinted away in the early stages and put in some really nice laps, which was really good to see early on. But my dad, in these early stages, was able to close up to the back of him here at the end of this first lap. Here you can see in the braking zones, he's definitely a lot quicker. So which way is he going to go? Is he going to be able to get the power on out of this corner? Jake leaves space to the right-hand side. They're side by side down to one of the trickiest parts of the track. And dad just swoops in front to gain what was then a fourth position. So that's good to see. On board with Greg, now he's right behind me here at the start of this race in second position. You can see we've got a couple of the faster guys just in front of us as well. So really interesting to see if we can keep up with them, but the general pace was just a little bit off them. It was to start with a couple of tenths of a second, then it got up to about a second, which is, just shows you the difference between people that cart a lot and then us who don't cart so often. So down to the tricky part of the track once more, it's, it's kind of like a hairpin, but it's very, very quick. You're switching back in yourself nearly 180 degrees, but it's quite wide, it's quite open. So as you're going down there through the, the tree complex, I guess you'd call it, it's always a bit tricky to get that perfect. But these early stages, it was good for myself and Greg who were in the sight of the people in front. So we could kind of copy their lines early on, but once they had breached a gap, it was kind of hard to fully focus and get those lap times in my fastest lap was actually on the second lap of the race which I think really says it all when I had that motivation to chase these guys down in front I was not doing so badly but once they broke away once they did a couple of rough laps they managed to get a gap and really break away from us so that unfortunately meant that I couldn't quite keep up but still really good fun out there and now we're going to go back on board with myself here you can see I'm quite close to these these carts in front but my actual pace was quite far off what I normally do and the only reason I was keeping up with these guys was down to the fact that they were battling. I didn't really have much of a chance once they managed to break away. You can see a couple of my lines are all over the place. Wasn't the best driving for myself this weekend but regardless I've got to just try and keep it on the track here and I've got the lead within our group here so I'm going to try and keep that for the rest of this race but of course it would be nice to beat a couple of the, the quicker carts but of course that was going to be quite unlikely unless one of them had an incident for example so as we head towards the bridge section we'll fly underneath it here this is a really really fun section of track here you sweep under there and then obviously you keep that momentum going through here with a small dab on the brakes through there as you go back over the bridge once more it's a really nice flowing circuit this one there's only really one sort of sequence of corners which is quite slow and that's at the very end of the lap as you head on to a new lap so I was pretty happy in general with how I was doing in comparison to these guys in front early on but once that consistency dropped away it was a bit tough but you can see that was a tighter sequence of corners there and they're still quite quick and even down into here as well because it's such a wide and open corner you can carry quite a lot of momentum through here I'm trying to use every bit of track as you can see there running wide on the exit but it probably was actually slowing me down taking these uh, unusual lines through here but I was doing my best early on to try and keep up with these guys but I honestly don't think I had the pace when they weren't battling so once they all got into a, an orderly queue and started driving normally and driving for themselves a bit more then they really managed to get away but overall it wasn't a terrible start to the race I guess I can be quite happy with my pace early on I'm all with dad now so he's got past Jake as we mentioned he's up into fourth position so in front is myself Greg and John in third position but there's a bit of a gap there because Jake got that really good start and then obviously was ahead for quite a while but the top three had really broken away so at this point fourth place is dad fifth place is Tom and then Jake is down in sixth position right now after that quick start so it was good stuff 
from Tom here. I think sneaks down the inside where Dad runs a little bit wide, but Tom capitalises on that and goes straight past. So really impressive stuff there to capitalise on the mistake straight away. Tom isn't actually one of the most aggressive drivers in this field. He's actually really quite fair and clean. So he normally waits a little bit longer than he normally would expect in a car to go for the overtake. But because he wants, he's got through, the pace is pretty quick. So could he still be on for a win here? As mentioned, my pace at the front wasn't particularly great. Greg was just behind and John was in third. So where can Tom go here? You can see how much pace he's got at the end of this lap here. Be impressive to see how far he can go. Greg was currently sitting in second position, putting in some consistent lap times. He'd slightly fallen away from myself in the lead of this pack, but regardless, he was still putting in consistent and quick lap times. But saying this, he was starting to be caught by John in third position, who had really been quite consistent throughout the qualifying session and through the race as well. He was putting in consistent lap times. They weren't the fastest times throughout the session, but they were consistent, and that was helping him keep up with the pace of Greg, who was a little bit more unpredictable in terms of lap time. You can see Greg starting to look behind him here, trying to figure out where John is. Is he catching him? But he most certainly was. I, I saw in a quarter of my eye whilst driving around that Greg was starting to be caught by John. And it was good to see from John because he had had a good start. Hadn't had the best of qualifying as mentioned. But regardless, he did a good job early on to pick up the pace and close to the back of Greg in the early stages of this race. By the sort of fifth or sixth minute of this race, John was really starting to put a good amount of time into Greg and was starting to catch him at a reasonable rate. Through the final couple of corners we can see Greg not quite taking all of the curb on the inside line there and as it wasn't wet I think he possibly could have taken a tad more so now that's right on board with John he's the person chasing down Greg and you can see he's doing a pretty good job here he's taking good momentum through the corners taking straighter lines that all means taking a shorter distance around the whole track and I think we can see here that John is most certainly a little bit quicker through here definitely as we take through that hairpin there and over the bridge I think we can see John has gained a couple of attempts just since we've been riding on board with him here so can he get that overtake done some really good lines here to be perfectly honest a tad wide going into there but it's such a tricky corner it's a very weird one you're not really sure where to hit the apex or even if you want to hit the apex through here through the last couple of corners here you can see that John is doing a little bit of a better job in terms of taking the curb but Greg has got a good run out of that final corner as we go down to the tree section I think that it's all on as even once more after that lap and John slightly taps the wall on the inside line there so let's ride back on board myself going through that similar path to track a few laps later you can see the group in front of me the quick cart master guys have started to pull away but they I think have just put a lap on Jake I think that is there and I go past as well here so as we go through this hairpin well, I suppose it's not technically a hairpin it kind of is it's got that sort of shape and I say thanks to Jake there for giving me the space and letting me through it's tough for Jake because he doesn't really have much experience in carts in general he's done quite well on some of the smaller tracks but this is quite a fast and big track so it definitely takes some experience back on board with John here and he started to close up to Greg once more it might not be tenths of a second like I mentioned but it's it's closing down that's for sure you can just see it come down ever so slightly through certain corners in particular as well now Greg did say that he wasn't feeling particularly well so he was starting to maybe struggle a little bit in terms of that as well. He goes off the defensive alongside John here and John nearly gets a move down the inside there. It was quite close as we go down to the tree section once more. Actually, Greg's pulled out a bit of a gap to be fair because John had to possibly get on the brakes through the final couple of corners here. But this is a really good battle here from John. He's taking some pretty good lines through here. Some interesting ones, I guess you'd say, if you're the FIA, but let's not get onto that. The consistency is definitely helping John in this part of the race here whereas Greg was a little bit more up and down in terms of qualifying he obviously got the quicker overall time but only just and this consistency in the race is proving to be very very good for John here definitely having to back off a little bit now as Greg is starting to slow down now he was starting to feel bad as mentioned so I think to go around these last couple of corners to start a new lap here I think Greg actually pulls off to the left hand side here to uh, to let John through Greg wasn't feeling particularly well and he actually would end up coming into the pit lane so that was a bit of a shame for him we'd have a couple of minutes in there I think also he was having a bit of a struggle with his suit as well you can see here he really was going slowly just to get out of everyone's way as he had come up to the midway point of the lap but it's where that you enter and exit the pits so he comes into the pits here and he'll give himself a bit of a breather and then he'll end up going back out again for a couple of laps to see whether he can 
feel any better but that's a big shame for Greg obviously he's done really well in this championship so far so that's a big tough one to take there back on board with dad here and I think he's starting to let some of the leaders through possibly here see whether he gives them the space down the inside here oh no that's actually myself putting a lap on him so I'm not one of the leaders that's for sure in the overall pack but dad giving the space there which was appreciated and then through here you can see that the sun is most certainly set at this point so we're getting a bit of an overcast grey feel to the sky but the lights are starting to come on and it's all a bit of a different atmosphere as it all gets colder out there you can see my dad washes out a little bit as he goes through the tree turn so that's obviously a part of the track where he's struggling a bit with the front of his car I guess not having quite the grip that he wants through there so Greg did come back out to the track here but he tried his best to get back up to speed and he just he just couldn't do it he was feeling pretty rough by this stage here so he'd pull into the pit lane and a big shame for him as I mentioned he's had a number of podiums so far this season and he's had some really good pace so that's a big tough one to take for him so he'll end up retiring from the race there he'll still be classed as eighth in our running order but still a big shame for him back on board with john here we're getting into the closing stages of this race now the last couple of laps and john pulls to the right hand side here to let some of the leaders through but what he doesn't realize is he actually lets tom through here so i think he hit the steering wheel a bit there because he realized oh i've actually just given up third position to tom which actually was now second position of course because Greg had came into the pit lane so He'd just given up second position there, so John was a little bit annoyed at himself for that. Uh, I don't think his pace was that much worse in the overall race terms than Tom, so I think he probably could have held him off to be perfectly honest. And now uh, looks like John is letting more leaders through here. So the pace between the front guys and us was actually quite considerable, to be fair. I mean, I know they were lighter, that's for sure. I think most of them were about 20 kilos lighter than us, even though they were in the heavyweight division. So it is what it is but of course that's a bit of a factor in racing carts now jake lets me through once more here good job getting out of the way i appreciate that as always it's nice to have that respect between each other when out on track not having all that bumper stuff bumper driving which isn't great but regardless back on board with dad here as he's getting to the closing stages of this race here he's currently then in fourth position after having a tricky qualifying where he's a little bit off the pace i think he was a little bit happy with the race pace it was good it was quite consistent but not quite the pace of myself and Tom at the front and then to be fair it was probably about the same pace as John in third place but as mentioned he got a pretty bad start and then struggled to get past Jake early on and he's actually trying to get past Jake once more to put a lap on him here so he looks to the left then looks to the right gets past there in the end that was a bit of a tricky one for Jake there I think he was trying to sort of stay to the left hand side but my dad went to try and make the overtake a little bit harder for himself but under the bridge once more uh, he's going to put together a nice couple of laps to end this race here saying that a little bit wide through there but regardless it's, it's getting late onto this race a 30 minute race for anyone in carts is always a tough one to be perfectly honest there very very tough to keep pace throughout a whole session so it's always tough on all of us especially those that are a little bit older let's just say that Regardless, I'm coming up to the lap, John here, so he's had good pace throughout this race, but I think, say in the last 10 minutes of the race, after he accidentally let past Tom, he possibly lost a little bit of motivation because he wasn't really having anyone to race with. So it's a bit of a shame, but still he was in third position, I think he'll take that in a 30 minute race. It's always tough to keep it consistent throughout. And whilst the pace possibly dropped off a bit towards the end, and of course he was being actually quite favourable to people when they were lapping him. He was really getting out of their way, which you can see right here. Nice job there. Doing maybe above what you really need to do to be fair to him. Regardless, on board with John here. This is the last lap of the race here. So he's put in some consistent laps throughout as mentioned. The pace probably wasn't quite what he wanted throughout the whole race. I think he would have liked to finish second after Greg pulled into the pit lane. Mistakenly letting Tom through was obviously a bit of a tough one here, but Tom's pace was pretty impressive to be fair. So maybe he wouldn't have been able to keep him behind, but there's the checker flag. John comes into the pits at the end of this one. I think he's a little bit disappointed with the pace towards the end of the race, but regardless, I think it's a good, important one from there. Some more solid points on the board, which we'll have a look at in a second here. So I ended up winning head of Tom. You can see our fastest laps were quite close, and John's fastest lap, to be fair to him, isn't bad at all. Less than eight tenths of a second off myself, which I think is quite good. I think he's quite happy with that. A fun but tiring race, that's the top three. 
Then Dadbury finished fourth, fastest lap of 45.4. He was in the same lap as John, but a little bit further back. Jake was on 28 laps, and Greg only finished 15 before he'd end up pulling into the pit lane, but he's still classified on our leaderboard. So what's that done to the top of the standings? Well, I have now edged out a gap, quite a considerable one at the top of this championship. So after this round, I felt like it was in a pretty good place for myself here. Looking forward to the rest of the season, of course, hoping to pick up a few more victories. But regardless, this felt like a pretty important round for the championship with John struggling a little bit and myself managing to get the pole time within our group, also the race win and the majority of the time trial sessions we also put on with the lap time. So that was quite important for my championship. So I was quite happy with that. The gap between John and Greg also went up, of course, and Dad gets into the top half of the standings as well in fourth. Mike is in fifth on 152, George on 97, Tom one point further back on 96 points. Now, George has done two rounds to Tom's ones. So that's pretty impressive there from Tom. A really nice haul of points for his first round of the championship. And Jake would finish with 56 points, of course, after finishing fifth place in the race after Greg's retirement and also a number of fifth places in time trial sessions as well because of Greg's retirement early on. So good stuff there. We'll look forward to the next round of the championship coming onto YouTube very soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.